Oh, <laughs> it's messing with that. <laughs> Day, another real world test. Today we're doing on the Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus, the big boy. And eagle eye viewers might notice I'm not in New York City like I normally would be. We're traveling. And right now, we're actually in Austin, Texas with John Deere. Yeah, the tractor company. More on that a bit later. But as always, we're gonna test out this phone while we explore. But first things first. Coffee, check. But we do not have time to talk right now. We're gonna be late for the bus. And they told me that if it's 9 a.m. and you're not on the bus, there's no head count, they're leaving without us. And it's, I got five minutes. <laughs> uh, what we, we got here, a little, little yeah. quick croissant. No, a cheese Danish. Yeah. Cheese Danish. Yeah, but huh. because we're in Texas, it's the size of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold it up. <laughs> Let's confirm that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can confirm. <laughs> And welcome to the John Deere new training facility in Austin, Texas. And they've flown a bunch of us out here to learn more about what their tech does and also really about like farming in general, which I'm fascinated by ever since I came on one of these trips with John Deere about a year and a half ago to Iowa. Yesterday though, we were in about seven hours of PowerPoint presentations. It was, uh, it was a lot. But today we actually get to see the stuff in action, which I'm excited about. And so I guess we have like multiple stations where we're gonna be like bouncing between today to learn about a few of their different technologies technologies here. And the first station I saw was this one, which is actually a feature they've had in their tractors for a while, but it allows you to create lines and the tractor then automatically stay on that line using GPS while you like till or plant or whatever. And then it gets to the end of the field. It'll actually turn for you. So self-driving and then go to the next line and so on and so on zigzagging across the field. And that's how farmers are now able to get those crazy perfect rows of crops. I've always kind of wondered how that was possible, but this is how. Then the next station we got to see how a combine harvester that they have can actually communicate with other machines on the farm like this tractor pulling a grain cart and it can actually tell it when the combine needs to offload the crops that it's gathered and will automatically sync the distance and speed of the tractor and the cart with the combine so that it can easily like, dump the grain out into the cart without having to stop and lastly this morning we got to see their fully autonomous tractor which they actually debuted at CES not too long ago but Right now, it can do tilling on the farm, which is the process of stirring up the soil, generally done like before you start to plant, to remove the garbage from the last crop, and also mix up the soil to make it better to plant into and level it, etc. But that one job for now can be done, as long as there is gas in the tractor, without any human interaction. And it can even be controlled via an app. So it's like real life Farmville. <laughs> Now, I gotta say, it's super weird to see a giant tractor just tilling without anyone inside. All right, and while we're here, really quick while I'm not inside one of the machines, um, let's talk about the design of the S23 Plus. And apologies if you've watched my S23 video already as there will be a lot of overlap considering they're just, they're very similar phones. But first, we now have floating cameras on the back as Samsung calls it, instead of that separate chunk that we used to have, which I honestly kind of liked, but this more minimalistic look I also like, I'm just kind of into that style. But it now makes both the S23 Plus and S23 look a lot more like the S23 Ultra. So the whole lineup kind of matches a bit better. Now the Plus and the S23 are basically 
basically the same phone for the most part, minus the screen size and the battery. So it just kind of comes down to whatever size you prefer. I already did my S23 video. If you guys want to check that out at the link below. And if you're not already, maybe subscribe and ding the bell. If you want to see more real world tests down the road. And if the mood strikes you, go ahead and feel free to go back into the real world test playlist links below as well. And you can check out places that we've already explored. Now for the display, we have a 6.6 .6 inch here on the plus and a 6.1 inch on the S23. Both are flat, which you guys always are very vocal about liking. So I'm sure you'll like that. Frankly to me, it does feel good. I do like the flat screen, but the S23 Ultra's like slightly curved screen doesn't really bother me either. But of course, that's just how I feel. Now the screen is the same as last year, but honestly, that's fine. Samsung S series phones just tend to have some of the best screens out there regardless. And if we're honest, most nice screens that you see on other phones are even generally made by Samsung Display. But they are super bright, colors look great, and they're 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate. So that means that they can go from 120 hertz or refresh what's on the display 120 times a second, which is great for smoother animations and gaming. Or they can bring that down to 48 hertz or 48 times a second when you're looking at something like a photo on the display that has less movement and that helps save battery. Now, unlike the S23 Ultra though, neither the S23 or the S23 Plus can go all the way down to one hertz, which that one can, which just would save a bit more battery. Nothing I can do about my hair. I'm sorry. I know it's bothering a lot of you, but there's nothing I can do. I mean, farms are windy. Now, quick lunch break. Guess what we're having for lunch? Tacos, because obviously. Okay, besides the autonomous self-driving type stuff, which is neat, there's a few other pieces of tech here that I found kind of interesting. Firstly, we got to see a device they call CN Spray, and it uses computer vision to identify weeds in a field, and it'll spray only the weed with herbicide, saving the farmer money on herbicide, because less is being used, but also spraying the crops less as well. Want to see if we can keep up with the CN Spray? Yep, yeah, yeah, yes I do. Let's do it. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> It's faster than I thought! <laughs> oh, faster than I thought it was gonna be. Woo. Didn't expect that. I my exercise for the day. And I'm spent. <laughs> Bedtime. Oh, and it can do all of that at 12 miles an hour, which is faster than Fisher and I thought. <laughs> they also showed us a planter, which usually consists of many of these like robot looking devices that carve open the dirt. They put a seed in, but these ones actually also spray that seed with fertilizer and only the seed, not in between them. So again, this is saving fertilizer for the farmer and then it'll close the ground back up behind it. Now they're also working on a new tech called furrow vision that scans the ground with a laser during that process to identify how deep of a trench or furrow it's creating to help with making sure the seed is put at the proper depth, which is crucial for being able to grow properly. And honestly, all of this is just fascinating to me. Like farming in general is fascinating to me. Okay, while we do have a bit more time here on the farm before we head to dinner, let's talk about the cameras on the S23 Plus. We have a very similar three camera setup to last year's S22 Plus. They're same specs wise. We have a 12 megapixel F 2.2 13 millimeter equivalent field of view ultra wide. That is a one by 2.55 inch sensor with 1.4 micron sized pixels. And technically this is a new sensor. It's the Sony IMX 564 versus the IMX 563, but there's not really much of a change there. We also have the same 50 megapixel f 1.8 1 by 1.5 6 inch Samsung ISOCELL GN3 main sensor with one micron size pixels that are binned in sets of two by two like usual to get a 12 megapixel image with two micron sized pixels. And yes, that math does not make sense. But for some reason, there's 0.5 megapixels that is missing that should be there. I, I don't know. And that main sensor is also a hair less wide at 24 millimeter equivalent field of view compared to the 23 millimeter equivalent of last year. And then we have a telephoto sensor, which is the S5K 3K1 sensor, which is the same actually from the S21 Ultra, by the way, from years back. And it's a three times optical telephoto lens with a 10 megapixel F 2.4 70 millimeter equivalent field of view that is 
a one by 3.94 inch sensor with one micron sized pixels. Now, sensors aside though, the photo processing has changed for sure. And for the most part, I tend to like it, but it's not a huge difference. Honestly, I'll let you guys though be the judge as usual by the end of this video of which one you guys preferred. Let me know in the comments below. Now we also have an updated selfie camera. And for once it's the same 12 megapixel S5K 3LU sensor that is now across the entire lineup. So the S23, 23 plus and S23 Ultra all have that. Now for video, again, I'll let you guys decide with the footage in this video if it's an improvement or not over last year, but you can now shoot in AK30 instead of AK24, which nobody's gonna do, probably. Welcome to the Moonshine Bar and Grill. It's a spot in downtown Austin known for like fancier Southern comfort food. And today we actually have like a buffet style with fried chicken and waffles and mac and cheese. And it's all delicious and heavy, but delicious. Good. Delicious, but that was too big of a bite. But something I thought was fascinating is that this place happens to be a national historic place. And for almost a hundred years, it was a dry goods store run by a German settler named Henry F. Hofheinz, who settled here in 1852. The main store itself is now the main dining room for the restaurant. And this building, which is now used for private dining, was once a Sunday house, which is a term for a place where rural German settlers would come into town on a Saturday and spend the night in a place like this to visit markets and attend church on Sunday morning. And there are 65 Sunday houses in the nearby town of Fredericksburg. And there used to be more than 30 here in Austin as well. But over the years, the ones here have been torn down. And so this is now the last Sunday house still standing. But while we're here, let's talk a little bit more about the experience of using the S23 Plus. Inside the phone, we have a new Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset. But unlike the other phones with that same chipset on the market, this one is marketed as for Galaxy. Essentially though, we were told that Qualcomm, who makes the chipset, worked closely with Samsung to optimize it specifically for Galaxy devices. Now, as far as I can tell, what that translates to is really an overclocked CPU and a GPU. And then Samsung and Qualcomm made sure the chipset worked well with Samsung's specific applications. And I don't mean like the apps on the phone, like the branded apps. I also mean hardware applications, like the camera's ISP, for example. Now, regardless, between the chipset and let's assume whatever those optimizations are that are probably helping it a little at least, plus the 120 hertz display and the fact that the storage in here by the way is UFS 4.0 a newer standard for storage that's twice as fast as 3.1 which is what most other flagships would be using right now but with all of that as I said about the S23 Ultra in my video on that as well as on the S23 in my video on that the phone feels fast like it might be one of the fastest feeling phones period now in addition to that we also have a bigger battery it's 4700 milliamps in here in the plus and 3900 actually in the S23 so both of them have got a 200 milliamp bump from last year and honestly the S22 Plus was already pretty good with battery and this only improves upon that, which we'll talk about a bit more later. Now, as always, I will leave the best price that I could find on the S23 Plus in the description below. Okay, calling it a night. Firstly, my battery died while we were at the bar. I may or may not have unplugged a lamp in the bar to charge the phone. But that's besides the point. Here is my screen on time and my usage for anybody who's curious about those things. Now, as always, keep in mind, this is a real world test day. It was not a normal day. I used the camera a ton. In fact, over two hours in this video. And considering that, this phone lasted a very long time, more so than other phones I've used. But here is another day 
there was not a real world test day so that you have something more normal to compare it to. And you can see it lasted a very long time. In fact, I would maybe say that this phone has probably the best battery life of the S series devices this year, including the Ultra, even if just by a little bit. And so if you were looking at the S23, which I did a video on as well, I'll leave a link below to that. That one I think had the best improvement in battery life from last year, which makes it a much better phone, but you can learn more about that there. But if you're looking at that and you want a bigger screen and even more battery life, then the S23 Plus obviously is an option. The only downside I will say is that it is $1,000 at the moment. Now that's normal. That is a price that it would normally be. The issue isn't the price. It's the fact that there's a lot more competition around that price that I think might be worth checking out at least. Now, personally for me, if you're in a country that does offer them, the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro are something that you should definitely look at. The Pixel 7 Pro being $100 cheaper than this phone and actually is usually on sale. I will leave a link below to the best price that I could find on that. There is a sale going on right now, at least the time that I'm recording this. And also for the S23 Plus, I'll find the best deal that I can and leave that below as well. But at those prices, you're getting arguably a better UI, in my opinion. Most people would probably agree, better photos straight out of the camera, at least. Also, you get that five times telephoto, which is great. And well, worse battery life on that phone than this one. But still, something I would at least take a look at if you're looking at this phone. And speaking of the other phones in competition with this one around the same price point, my buddy, Michael Fisher, you might know as Mr. Mobile, who was actually inspired by this real world test series a while back. And now he also films while he's running around and we did that together today, which is fun. So if you want a different perspective on today's event, as well as a view of some other shenanigans, and also want to learn more about some of the competition to this phone, specifically those one inch sensor camera phones that are making the rounds, right now and his opinion on that, check that video out at the link below as well as at the end of this video. And now I'm gonna head downstairs for one drink, a nightcap, just to say goodbye to everybody as this is the last day of the event. So, good night. Isn't that supposed to stop the door from opening? <laughs> Revving their motor outside.